there's a mountain and you're skiing down the mountain. <laughs> so you're not going to explore multiple paths because the only way is down. So you will uh-huh. only traverse one of the many paths, uh, one of the trails. <laughs> I like this analogy. I want to go skiing. But uh, so th- I guess we left off at. We've seen how、uh, a binary tree can be traversed.、Um, how you can add insert a new node into a binary tree, and how you can find an existing value in a binary tree.、Mm-hmm. Um, and we haven't completed the crud. I, I think we kind of we kind of did a hand wavy way of seeing. How to create a new node?、Um, hold on.、Um, oh, and we didn't write down. We, we talked about retrieval.、Um, I didn't write down the algorithm, but the algorithm is basically. But but you you kind of walk through it. But basically, the algorithm is. Um, while <laughs> while uh haven't while a、uh, current node is not null and a node value is not equal to the target, let's say, like we haven't found it yet. Mm-hmm. Um. Then. Then, if the current node is, if if the node value, let's call it node value. If the node value, in the language, it might be like current node dot value or something. If node value is, if the target is. Is greater than the node value,、um, then you、uh, then current node is the node that is equal to the right child. Let's say、uh, else if target is less than the node value, then current node. Becomes the left child, right? That that that's more or less the algorithm. There might be some details I'm missing, but that's the idea. And what is the big O of this algorithm? Oh, oh, and and at the end, if uh if they match or else, then they match. <laughs> <laughs> Math. Uh, well, actually. Else, it's not a match yet because the current node might be null. So, ah, I'll just hand wave that. Else, if target is equal to node value, then return current node. Let's say, and then if you fall out of all of that, uh, else if node is null. And return now. Something like this. Sure. Um. Um. It, it's actually a good exercise to code this up in whatever language you're comfortable with. Um. But um. I guess the what what is the big O of this algorithm to retrieve、yeah. a node in the in the binary tree? I'm trying to think. I'm I'm going to try to think out loud on this one because. I don't think it's <clears throat> big O of n because is it big O of like half of n because it's we're splitting everything in half in time like my where my brain is going is kind of like I know it doesn't it's not gonna grow in quite in step with the length or the size of our binary search tree but it is gonna grow if we have a much much larger Tree, it's going to be 
larger than if we have a small tree. Mm -hmm. But by but I'm thinking by half. Hmm? By what? By half. By like half. By, by half. It's, it's a half of in. I, I don't think that's right, actually. Um, hmm, what is it? Oh, is it the log? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, that's the one. Um, right. So it, it it's log n. Um, log and I would like to illustrate why. Um, okay. That would probably the, be good. Um, so yeah, the the big O of retrieval is log n. And the way to see why is this tree structure. Let, let's say you have a fully balanced. Uh, uh, oh, it only works if it's a fully balanced tree. If okay. it's a completely unbalanced tree, such as this one, mm -hmm. then it will be a big O of n. <laughs> because, okay. uh, because that's just like a linked list, and you have to traverse the whole linked list. Sure. Uh, so, um, but it, similarly to the binary search scenario, um, with each additional step we take, and when I say step, I mean the number of iterations of this while loop, right? Okay. Uh, with a with with binary search, it was also like a loop, right? You 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 go in a loop, and in iter each iteration of the loop, you shrink the search space in half, right? Correct. Yeah. So and we we call that the, the number of steps you take. Um, so I use the word step here to mean each iteration of the loop. Okay. Uh, and and in the case in in the case of the binary tree, each step you take you're traversing down a level in the tree, right? Yeah, right. like the first step you take, you start from the root and then traverse down one level to each child, one of its children, and so forth. Um, so what I want to say is, um, and just for succinctness, I, I, I'm not going to draw the circles anymore. Sure. Um, so, um, so like we have a root node. I want to draw a fully um, balanced and full tree. Oh, hold on. I messed up. That, that shouldn't be a four. That should be like a nine or something. Eight. Okay, so um, you can actually already kind of see the signs of uh, of the exponential going on here because um, if you count how many uh, things are at each level. So level one, we have uh, one node. Uh, level two, we have two nodes. And level three, we have four nodes. Now each time we're doubling, right? Yes, I see that. And if you go to level four, we're going to get eight nodes, and then 16 nodes, and so forth. So the, uh, this is so the um, so um, the number of nodes there will be. So the number um, again, we're assuming a fully balanced tree, and this may not always be the case. So I'll caveat that. Um, but we're if we assume the fully balanced tree then the number of elements that will be in a tree of level n is like, so the question is how many elements are in a fully balanced tree uh, having n levels? 
What was the answer to that? Okay, so this is where my um, my bad math skills are going to show themselves. But well, we so, already have the first three yeah. levels calculated. Yeah, but but as a formula. Yeah, exactly. It's a formula. So it's like it's like okay. So we don't know what n is. It, uh -huh. We're like solving for n. Like n is unknown. Um, but it should be. So I know every every time we're doubling it, every time we go through a level. So what's the formula gonna be? Get this out. Mm -hmm. In square, it's not in squared. I mean, that's it's in square for each level we go down. Mm -hmm. Right, but it's we don't know. But we don't know how many levels we have. Uh, right. We don't. Uh, this might help. Uh, if we um, <laughs> if we for now we'll discard level one, but at level two, mm -hmm. we have two. And then at level three, uh, I see the pattern. We have yeah. two times two. And then yeah. at level four, we have two times two times two. And then level five, we have two times two times two times two, uh, five times, etc. So, so you multiply two by itself uh, that many times. That many that, times. Um, yeah. And so that's an exponent. That's an exponential. So that means it's two to the n. Okay. Two to the n. Um two to the n. And if I ask the inverse question now, um how many how many levels are in a tree, in a fully balanced tree that contains, uh, let's not use N this time, that, that contains E elements? What's the answer to that? That's so the exactly inverse question right is and so an element is uh, just a number in the tree a number, but, yeah. or, or, or it could it is it could be a person it could be anything but uh yeah in simple example is a number yeah so it's going to be the number divide we're going to be dividing by n no, that's not right. <laughs> Sorry, I told you my math skills are rusty. I need to I need to do some studying up here. Okay, it's so gonna be the number of elements. Okay, we've got the number of elements. But we're so going this, to this this is the well uh, th this is the exact inverse of um of the exponent the, the, the exponent. So it it's like before I was saying um, if if the tree has three levels, mm -hmm. then you're going to say um, well, two to the, well, it's actually two minus, two to the n minus one, actually. <laughs> uh, because um, if it has one level, um, well, okay. Mm, I don't want to confuse you too much, but but for 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 level one, it the answer is one because there's only one node. Oh, hold on, this is wrong. Sorry. Um, how many elements are in a? Uh, it's uh, okay. So, so if if it's um. I'm confusing two issues. One one is how many elements are in that level, but another is how many elements are in the entire tree, and those are slightly different. So le level three, there are four elements. You can see these four numbers. 
uh, but in a tree, in the whole tree, there are actually seven elements. Seven total, let's say, because we're adding up these three here as well. Right. Um, and then there's a, in level two, if we don't count the third level, mm -hmm. we, we just pretend it's a tree that only has these three things, then there's three total. And then level one, there's just one total. I kind of skipped over that. <laughs> kind of trying to go too fast. Um, and if we did one more level, then the level four, I'm not going to draw them out just because sure. it's tedious, but level four would have eight elements. Uh, but the total number would be eight plus what we already had, which was seven, which mm -hmm. so we would have 15 total, um, et cetera. And the way you, well, the, the pattern might emerge. Um, you might see it if you just look at it and realize that the other element, like if you count the number of elements in a level, say mm -hmm. the third level, there are four. Um, the other element in the tree is always going to be one less than the number of elements in that level. Mm. Like okay. there's four and there's three, three from from the top. And then if if it's if it's level four and it has eight, then there's gonna be seven above it. I see. Um and and so forth. Um there might be multiple ways to arrive at that at that conclusion, but basically uh, you might come up with the answer that it is you you double the number of uh, elements at that level and then you minus one. Okay. <laughs> so we can do that as a four. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm very very uh, slow with math. I promise. I'm sorry. Sorry, Toby. That's not helpful for this. You know, quick on the I usually have to write it out and think, and that's not a good thing. But I have room to improve. Um, let's see. Okay, so that formula is makes a lot of sense. So let's say we have okay, how many levels are in a fully balanced tree that contains e elements? We know the number of elements. So we can so it, it, if, if we had a lookup table yes then then it would just be a lookup to answer this question right if i wrote all of these things down sure then you would you'd be like okay it contains eight elements okay 15 oh, wait how many levels no it contains uh 15 elements <laughs> Yes, this, this 15 is what we're trying to match. So right. if it contains 15 elements, then there needs to be four levels. If it contains uh, seven elements, then there needs to be three levels. Um, if it's greater than seven, but uh, less than 15, there still needs to be at least four levels because there's some spilling over from level three. So, and and that uh, the thing that expresses this relationship, it, it's the inverse of this two uh, to the n power uh, equation, and the inverse of the exponential equation is what? Do you remember? Because this we we looked at this last time, and we were like, well. If you plot this, like oh, if, the the log, the yeah. log is the inverse. Yes, I do remember that. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so the 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 exponential it looks so like this. Yeah. And then if we just flip this and mm -hmm. then turn it ninety degrees, it it looks like that. And <laughs> so 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 this guy is the exponential, and uh, that other guy is the log. Got it. Okay. And and there are inverses of each other. So so yeah. So yeah. So so this would be log 
a log base 2 because we had the base of the exponent was 2. Log base 2 of, uh, well, e. Um, so yeah, log base 2 of e. So, uh, um, and th this minus 1, that's just to be precise, right? But again, when we're doing big O, we don't care about the little details like that. <laughs> so, so at the end, we're just going to say, oh, it's a, it's a log function. Um, and therefore, uh, if you look at what the algorithm is doing, oh, at most, it's going to travel the entire height of the tree, right? It, it's, yes, it's basically... Yes. It's, yep. it, there's a mountain and you're skiing down the mountain <laughs> through through one very narrow path. You're not going to explore multiple paths because the only way is down, is downwards. So you will huh. only traverse one of the many paths on the mountain, oh, one of the trails. On the, <laughs> I like this analogy of skiing. Oh. I want to go skiing, but um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, and and that is basically the height of the mountain or or, or the tree, <laughs> uh, and and now uh, the height of the mountain, right? That's the number of levels of the tree, mm -hmm. and that is log base two of e, and therefore, uh, the amount of iterations of this while loop that we'll have to do is at most the height of the tree. Yes. And that is a log of n. And therefore, this algorithm's runtime is at worst big O of log of n. If we have a balanced tree. <laughs> I want to circle, Correct. I want to put a pin back in that one. I feel like we'll circle back around to it, but yes. I want to get us off topic. Uh, <laughs> yes, if, if tree is balanced. The yes. more we talk about this, the more I see like how important that is. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, so, um, and okay, I, I think that was really good to like get into the details of that and uh, see that about out. Uh, so, all about creating a, a node. Well, creating a node is actually just finding the place where you're supposed to be. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, and then sticking it uh, under the node, right? So it'll be similar. So basically, find a number you are closest to, more or less, which which is going to be a big O of log n. Uh, Using same 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 as retrieve, and then you're just gonna add or to closest to or or uh, at the bottom of the tree. Uh, closest to which? Um, hmm. Let me think. I'm thinking about the case of a collision and what to do in mm -hmm. that case. Um, yes, I also uh, had that question. OK, so if there's no collision, then it'll definitely go to the to a place where you're going to be left with a null pointer, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can just say, oh, you, well, you already had a null pointer, so let me just stick myself in here where it used to be null. Okay. Um, so maybe I should write this all out then. Um, so while current node uh, is not null, um, if target is greater than node value, then current node is right child else if target is less than node value and current 
node is left child. Or else if node is the node value, what do you do? Whoops. Um, what do you do in this case? Um, let me think. I think you can choose to go either left or right, I believe. Let me see what would happen. Hmm? I think that can work. Uh, 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 and, uh, either it, way. Yeah, in, in some system, like you, depends on your application. Uh, so for some applications, you don't want to allow duplicate values at all. Sure. Like, like, well, this needs to be a primary key, right? Uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we don't want any duplicates. So maybe you just throw an error. But let's, but if you did want to allow duplicate values, then like, let's say we wanted to put the value 12 into this tree again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you'll say like, uh, well, 12 is equal. <laughs> um, right. uh, okay, uh, you, you can, but we still have to put it in the tree somehow. So I don't care, I go left or go right. You either, I, I could see like you randomly choose, <laughs> but uh, you could also just like deterministically say, well, if it's equal, I also go left. Then, okay. the, and, um, and if you did go left, then you end up putting the new 12. Uh, you know, New 12, uh, no, the 12 will go oh, here. Oh, it's greater, yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, you're, yeah, I was yeah. totally missing that. It's left, okay. Yeah, the new 12 will go here. Yeah. And let's say if you wanted to put in 12 again, <laughs> then you, yeah, go, okay, go left, and then go right, and then you go left, and then the new 12 will go here, et cetera. So you just will end up with a bunch of 12s that are awesome. clustered. Yeah, but 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 you can only add things at the bottom of the tree in a, oh, not necessarily the bottom, but you can only add things at a place where to, there's a node that is a leaf. These are called leaves. Okay. Like they, they are, they don't have both sides of their um, children set to something already. So these guys are called, so you can only add yourself under a existing leaf. Okay. And so, so I guess if we go with that approach, then you can say if, you know, if it there, then also go to the left. <laughs> left, or, or maybe like oh, this is less than or equal to, then we go to the left. And then else, uh, no, there's no else because um, because we covered all the cases. It's either greater than or less than or equal to. Equal and to. if it's null, then we're gonna jump out of the while loop. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I guess at the point at which you jump out of the while loop, well, that's kind of a problem, actually. We're going to need to. No, I don't want to expose too much uh, of the nitty gritty, but. Sure. Parent, we're going to need to have uh, the parent note of the current note. Maybe we can, in some tree implementations, you can get, you can get at the parent note if you have the current note. I see. Let's let's just hand wave and say you can do that. But, it, but although you can, if you couldn't do that, you could just keep track of what the parent node was while you're doing this loop stuff, right? True, true, yeah. True. So I'm just gonna say parent node. Then parent node. Uh, oh shoot. Mm. But I didn't. I don't know which whether I went left or right from the parent node. So 
<laughs> oh. So, so like parent node, uh, left or right child will equal to a new node with the target value. Um, and I'm hand waving that. Uh, the either left or right child, depending on which direction I went down for the previous turn, if that makes sense, to, to get to the current node. I think I'm sort of missing something. I, I want to sort of talk through this create um, okay. th that you've you've laid out here. Okay. okay so we we have to create a new node. That, while I, we're, we're I think sorry. maybe we. Okay. Maybe we should actually code it, <laughs> but for okay. that, yeah, yeah, talk through it first. Okay, so we're trying to create a new node. That's the objective. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to enter into a while loop. The what condition is if the current node is not null. We we want you know to traverse until we get to a null node. Yep. The way we're going to do that is with our Left oh, oh child. let's let's set up the current node first. So at the beginning, we're gonna say current node is equal to the root of the tree. Okay. Current so node is root. Yep. Got it. Well, that node is not null. Mm -hmm. If the target, but wait, we have a target. What is the, the target at this point? Target was passed into the function. Okay. Uh, target is the node, the value we want to create. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe, so maybe I should you... maybe I should call it new value create. Maybe it's the new value. Yeah. That is that's that's good. That's more clear. Okay. So if the new value is greater than, we're going to fall down into the right child. If it's equal to or less than, right? Am I yep. that? Yeah. We're going mm -hmm. into the left child. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep doing that, keep keep you know following that pattern of we go left or we go right based on our condition yep. until we get to a null node. Yep. Mm -hmm. Once and then we're we'll at fall out of the while loop when that happens, yeah, because we'll of this. Okay. Once we're at our null node, we fall out of the while loop, like you said, and then we write our new value and replace replace the null value with our new value. Guess what I'm wanting to make sure I'm understanding is sort of what you're talking through here. We need to understand our relationship to our parent node at this point. And yeah, there's a gap. Yeah, we, we need to know whether I am the current node is the left child or the right child of the parent node. Oh, uh, well, but but the current node is null. <laughs> That's the problem. The current node is null because we already fell out of the while loop. Yeah. So so that that's the case where so this would be like we try to add 12 and then we go here and we go here, we go here and then we go here to the left of the last 12. Right. And and then the current node is null because oh. the last 12 has no left child currently. And then we we're going to want to take the parent node and set its left child to the new node we're going to create for the tree. So that's more or less what I'm saying. So it it, it depends on whether we took the right uh path or the left path at the previous turn. So do we need to know, we, hey, I took the right path or hey, I took the left path? Yeah, so so one way to do it might be like, we just keep a little Boolean left yeah. or right. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what it starts off with, uh, uh, Boolean. <laughs> and then here, if, if we took the right side, we'll say left or right. Uh, I'm going to call it, make it a string, actually. Okay. 
I'll make it empty. Left or right? If we took the right side, we'll set it to left, and now I'll set it to left. If right, and then we at the end we can do a little if statement here to say if we previously took the left, then we'll set parent node left child to the new node. But if we went right, then we'll set parent node to right child instead. Something like that. Okay. But uh, I'm still but, trying to wrap my mind around why why this is necessary. Like I I I I understand that we need to know. Did we go left or right? But why? Why do we need to know that? Why wouldn't we just either go left or right and then put the value in that place? No. Oh, the reason is because um, let's say you had um, let me see. Um, let's say we had a value here to the right of twenty. Let's say 25. We had 25 here. Okay. So 20 has a right child, but no left child. So, and we want to add 18. Okay. So we're going to come down here and we're going to hit, uh, okay. hit this, yeah. this spot here. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to end up with the, Current node is null because we it, it always gonna be null at the end of that while loop, um, and we're gonna know the parent node of the null is twenty. Uh, but we we're gonna want to know to set the new node at the left child of twenty and not the right child of twenty because the right child of twenty actually has something in it, and if we set the right child of 20, we're going to replace the existing thing that, that is 25. Okay. I think that maybe this was part of the whole process all along that I just hadn't really thought through yet is like, we always need to know, hey, did we go right or did we go left? Mm -hmm. We always have to know that no matter what. And I, we, I, we just haven't really talked about it yet. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, I think it will be it will help to actually write out the algorithm. Okay. Uh, although we will have fifteen minutes, um, so let me think. Let me um or it might be because hmm, if we if I write I'm not sure writing it out would necessarily clear it up for you either. Um because we would run it and then maybe it works. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, but that doesn't necessarily illustrate it either. Um There's actually multiple ways of implementing this algorithm. And okay. the way the way I chose might not be the cleanest, uh, I, but that's just because um, I haven't uh, thought out all the different, but I just haven't thought ahead. Sure. Um, yeah. no um, just, I just went into it. But, um, but I think in a way that's good too because like i want to show the naive way because the naive way is more easy to um understand intuitively sure. um so yeah the naive way is sort of like hmm. th there you can also do it with um a recursive function Mm -hmm. Where, hmm, let me think. In either case, I think it might be worth 
it might help to visualize it as this. Like, okay, I'm gonna draw another tree. Okay. And, th and then I'm gonna show you what it would feel like. Like, I want to try to illustrate what it feels like to be the program <laughs> okay. that that is actually uh, doing this. Uh, okay. Um, okay. You have so you have a tree, um, and you know, uh, to uh, maybe maybe I don't draw it again. Uh, I'm gonna. Oh, it's actually not super easy to just. Can I just do like this? Hold on. Oh, that would be too simple. You can just pick that up. There you go. <laughs> it works. Uh, okay, so, so can I, like, is there like a pointer function or something? I can select all these guys and move. Oh, nice. Okay. All right, that works. Okay, so this is the tree that we're, and we're going to try to add, oh, the, we're going to try to add a uh, seven into the tree, let's say. Okay. Now, for us humans, we can see everything here, right? But for a for the program that's looking at it, traversing down the tree, it can only look at node by node. So it's kind of like um, it can only see this. Yeah. Right? And it's not allowed to see the rest of the tree while it's doing it. And when when it's looking at this, it's saying, well, current node is uh, six. Um so and and my and my new value is seven, right? right. So so it's like, well, is it which way should I go? Should I go left or should I go right? Well, in this case, I should go right. Mm -hmm. And if I go right, now I'm looking at this, right? Yeah. And and the current node is going to update to nine. And then again, which way should I go? The left or right? Uh, in this case, I should go left. Left, yeah. I'm going to move the four out of the way here. Um, so I'm looking at eight. So now the current node is eight. Yep. And then is like, should I go left or should I go right? Uh, and in this case, is smaller. Right. So we're gonna go to the left. And there's nothing here. <laughs> yep. um, so here, where there's nothing, and we were supposed to like notate it like like yeah, this sometimes. Know. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking, this is a null value, and I want to, basically, when I see a null value, then I know mm -hmm. I should put myself here. Yes. I, I should replace this null value with myself. With my new value, yeah. Well, technically, I have to, like, generate the new node first, and then sure. stick stick the new value inside the new node, and then put it here. But the problem is... Um, the way of putting yourself in this place is you actually have to ask the parent node, the eight node, hey, can you make your left child refer to my new node? So that's the problem, right? And if, if when you're in this limited view, if you don't have access to the parent node, then you don't have a way of attaching yourself to the tree, first of all, which okay. is why you need to have access to your parent somehow. Okay. If, if you do get to this place. Um, um, and then secondly, 
having access having access to the parent is not enough because you need to know whether you should insert it yourself to the left or the right of the parent. Okay. So it's like when you're the program and you're on eight, your current note is eight. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a left path and a right path. I can ski down here. Yep. You, you say, okay, my new value is seven. So I know I need to ski down my left path. Right. Then you and get then, to yeah. the bottom of that and you have you have no more memory of, hey, am I on the left it, or am I on the right? <laughs> exactly. Because you're, you're there now. That's okay. exactly what, what it is. So, so what you could, there's multiple strategies for how to do this. Like one strategy would be like, well, okay, maybe instead of skiing down here to this no value, I'm going to do everything up here while I still can. Mm -hmm. That's one strategy. Well, that, that would mean you would add logic to say, well, if my left child is no, then go ahead and stick it in there. Or, or if you choose to go right, then in, instead of like moving to the moving the whole frame to the right or moving the whole frame to the left, you're going to say, uh, if the left side is no, and, you know, then just stick your just change your left reference to that if you were planning to go left anyway and in, instead of moving the frame then just attach it yeah. uh, you, you're gonna need a couple more if statements to your code to do that right sure. so it's a it's a trade-off um, or what you could do is say uh, you know what I'm gonna keep track of who my parent note is uh, and, and if I am on this frame, then my parent node is nine, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to also keep track of, you know, uh, my, how I got here. Uh, yeah. So like relationship, <laughs> relation to parent <laughs> is left, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and if I had those two pieces of information inside this frame, then I would know what to do. Then, then if I move down to this frame and then the current node was null, and now I have the parent node and I have the relationship to parent is left, yeah. then I know, okay, I should take my parent node and set its left child to the new node that I'm gonna create. Okay. I'm with you. I'm, the, the, I'm, I'm understanding. My brain's there, finally. Cool. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. So, uh, so that's uh, that's uh, I, I think this. Yeah. If this is like uh, your first time learning about this data structure, uh, yes, it is. It, 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 it's kind of like yeah. I, I I'm envious of you. <laughs> you know, it's like that uh, to to be seeing this for the first time. Um, I do vaguely remember like the first college lecture that uh, I saw about this. And uh, it was like really weird, really kind of foreign to me, uh, but yeah. uh, kind of interesting. But I did, didn't totally get the implication of it either, even after that entire course, mm -hmm. uh, even after years later, uh, <laughs> I didn't really get it. Um, so far, to me, this is the coolest data structure we've looked at. For some reason, I just really like it. I think it's very beautiful. I think it it it's reminds me of it, it's like this intersection of of artistic and and very practical. Like I don't I, I can't even describe it, but it's a really cool data structure. I'm excited to to continue learning about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can go further. Um, so since we only have a few minutes left, I'm going to go. Uh, just like zoom back out a little bit and look at okay. the big picture. Um, and to say that, I actually, uh, on my YouTube channel, I previously did a, uh, did a video with Hui Qi about how databases work. Okay. And, and, um, and it's very, very much related to this concept. Um, although 
databases don't use binary trees. They use something that's called a B tree. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's almost a binary tree, but uh, but uh, the concept of the V tree is it's still similar to the binary tree. It's just that each node in the tree, the binary tree has a fan out of two, whereas okay. a B tree can have any amount of fan out. Ah. So so a B tree can have each node. Let's say uh, I have eight eight elements in each node of the tree. And in, in a B tree, I don't know, they, they probably use some power of two, like eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, stuff like that. Um so I have eight things in the tree and each thing has a number in it or, or well, usually it'll be a record of some sort that has additional information, but it'll have a key. Uh, and the key is the thing that we're gonna sort by, right? We're gonna use it to decide whether we're gonna go to the left or to the right. But um, let's say, you know, you have a key of one, and then five, eight. Oh, come on, what's going on? Oh, I don't have to do this. I can just 12, uh, uh, 30, 40, 50. Uh, and then you're going to fan out, basically. Do eight more of these guys. <laughs> mm. And oh, I'm going to run out of room because it, it because there's like eight more of these guys and each one is big, right? Yeah, interesting. Um, and et cetera. Uh, OK, it's going to be too tedious for me to do. Sure. But but you no, just you yeah, just imagine there's um eight more. And then at the next level, there will be uh, eight times eight, which is 64. So at level mm -hmm. three, there's already 64 eight cell boxes. Um, okay. And which means um, which every level your so so this would be like um eight to the n instead yeah. of two to the n so it um so if if you have a tree of n levels you will have eight to the n things have eight to the n uh nodes in the tree um but each node actually has eight element in it it's it's yeah so it, which means the amount of, although the amount of processing you have to do at each node is greater because you're not only choosing to go to the left or right you're choosing between eight different paths to go down and in order to do that, you're going to have to go through, like you start with the first cell and you figure out if the target is in between one and five. I see. And, and then you figure out if the target is in between five and eight until you hit the correct uh, range. And then once you've hit the range, then you go down uh, that, that trail. <laughs> that, okay. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, that's B trees, but I think um, maybe a good analogy to this is like uh, in a library, you organize things usually by the first letter, right? Yes. So you can imagine there's a shelf for A, a shelf for B, et cetera, right? Right. And, and those are your ranges at the top at the top level. Maybe the, bin one is all the A's and bin two is all the B's, etc. And maybe some there's some letters that are not as popular. So you jam multiple ones together, 
or something like x y z can all go on that one x y z shelf or something like that um and so you organize them in ranges but but it could be when your library gets really big then instead of shelves you have sections and each section has multiple shelves in it right yeah, yes so you have instead of an a shelf you have an a section which is an entire room and then inside that room you have to sub sub uh, organize it that's your level two right and uh -huh. then you and then you organize the shelves inside the a room by the second letter of the uh, of the author's name or something like that right sure yeah mm -hmm. and and that's kind of what you're doing with with the beach and, and even with the binary tree you're kind of doing it that way you're just saying like well everything that's like less than six it can go into this side of the building <laughs> greater than six it can go to the other side of the building and then i'm gonna subdivide it's it's just because like in computers everything's more dynamic than physical space so you can just sort of reorganize things and change them very quickly and that's what the binary tree is doing but uh conceptually it's same as dividing up physical space and try to organize stuff within it cool i'll have to keep that in mind because that that conceptual analogy that's really helpful <laughs>